in the last section of the traditional calculus sequence, my bright university students often struggle to take math from the two-dimensional page to three-dimensional space. In three dimensions, even simple shapes are hard to visualize. I teach my students to draw these, but these drawings are merely projections. They must necessarily hide something. Lately, I've been thinking that identity is similar to this. Identity is many, many dimensional. Yet when we present our identities, often those feel flatter than the reality, especially when other people have a stake in how our identities are perceived. We need a more precise language to talk about this. This is a need I've felt personally. Growing up mixed race was confusing, especially in high school. With my white friends, I was Asian. With my Asian friends, I was white. Shouldn't I be just one thing? It started to make more sense in college. I joined a club called Mixed, and I'll never forget when I saw the Bill of Rights for Racially Mixed People by Maria P.P. Roots. It had 12 rights. My favorite was I have the right to identify myself differently in different situations. This is what I needed verbalized. I didn't have to be consistent. But I don't think these rights are unique to being racially mixed. I think they apply to all the things that we are, to all our many complex dimensions. To illustrate our complexity as people, consider the question, if you were to write a memoir, how long would it be? Even if it was just the important things, the friendships that shaped you, the heartaches that lingered, the lessons you learned in defeat, it would still be long, right? If memoirs were short, what would therapists talk about? Memoirs are long because people are complex, and complex people have complex identities. But it's too much, too much to be all at once. You can't be your whole identity at the same time. But that's not a bad thing. It's okay to want to be someone different with your parents, and someone different with your boss, and someone different with your lover. Situation to situation, we may want to tailor the portion of our identity we place at the forefront. And just because you are something shouldn't mean you have to be that thing all the time. I'm Asian American, but when I'm lecturing on Green's theorem, professor is enough. I'm a professor, but if I was a professor all the time, my wife would leave me. And with my kids, I just want to be a good dad. This process where we choose which portion of ourselves we want to place at the forefront is what I want to talk about today. I call it identity fronting. It's a kind of freedom, a kind of basic human autonomy. It's how your complex identity can be a resource rather than a constraint. But sometimes we don't get to choose how we express our identities. We don't get to because someone else keeps doing it for us. Let's call that identity pushing. Sometimes it's subtle, other times it's explicit. It could be a passing remark that simply reminds you that while you think you're being professional, you're being heard as a representative of your race or your gender or your group affiliations. At its extreme, identity pushing can be oppressive. It can feel like people or a person is just adding a comment that means not normal or other. If it feels like it's putting you in your place, it might be doing that. You're being denied control of your identity. Your identity is being pushed by someone else for their purposes. If you've lived under the tyranny of racism or sexism, I imagine you know what it feels like to have someone remind you of your race or your gender. And when it comes to microaggressions, it's identity pushing that makes their sting so personal. Yet, even if you've always been sort of a member of the majority group, I suspect you know what it feels like to have your identity pushed. It can be that feeling when your parents bring up awkward facts about your childhood in front of your friends. Yes, mom, I once stuck a bean up my nose, but this is the last time I'm bringing you to faculty meeting. This might also sound familiar if you've been bullied. If you've been bullied, you know what it feels like to have your identity pushed. Bullies take facets of your identity and turn them into jabs, 
even things that should be accomplishments. Bullies make it clear how identity pushing can be a power play. More generally, you can see the link between power and pushing when you consider when is it most important to be tactful. It's most important to be tactful when the other person is significantly more powerful than you are. And what does it mean to be tactful? It means you're going to avoid topics that make them feel uncomfortable. In other words, good tact and proper etiquette have always protected the powerful from having their identities pushed. No one tells the king who the king really is. But the king, they can certainly tell you who you are. But I, I don't want kings. I want freedom. I want boundaries. I want space. I think identity can be like personal space. You know the personal space bubble? When someone breaches that bubble, it feels like they are physically too close for comfort. I think there's a metaphorical identity bubble. When people breach that bubble, it feels like they are being too intimate or too presumptive. And just like with personal space, we might let our partners inside, but maybe not our coworkers. And it can vary culture to culture, context to context. But here is my dilemma. I know how to ask someone to stop stepping on my foot. How do I ask them to give me more space around my identity? Did I even realize this was something I needed to do? Whether we can communicate our needs is fundamental to the health of our communities. I want a language for identity that brings our colleagues, friends, and family closer. One that centers the conversation on my goals and my needs and not on someone else's hidden intentions. I don't know anyone who has cracked this problem, but let me demo my attempt. Consider your coworker has just said, well, with your kids, I figured you'd prefer a less time-consuming project. Suddenly, we're no longer a team member. We are the parent team member. We could debate the implications of that, but consider saying, it's true, I am a parent, but right now I want to focus on how my years of experience can solve the problem at hand. Notice that we did two things here. First, we acknowledged our identity. We don't want to fight about facts. We're not ashamed of our identity, and we reserve the right to bring it up later. But we don't have anything more to say about it because it's not relevant to, and this is the second thing, our statement of who we want to be right now. We are redirecting the conversation and focusing it. We're not shutting it down. Of course, any conversation can go sideways, which is why it's important that as a society, we also experiment on how we can be more considerate about how we might be pushing other people's identities, especially when we're establishing a rapport. Generally, if you want to talk about a subject, you can first front something about yourself rather than assuming something about someone else's identity. If they want to talk about it, they probably will. It's the difference between offering a conversation and imposing a conversation. While I want us to be better about how we might be pushing each other's identities, I'm not saying it's never called for, maybe you need to recruit an ally. Alex, as a fellow person of X, how can you stand by and let this happen? Just know how imposing that might be. Stepping back to the societal viewpoint, the burdens of identity pushing are not equally shared. Underrepresented groups are pushed far more frequently. Yet I think the universality of the framework makes it clear that they, we, are not asking for anything special. We are just asking for the same affirmative relationship with our identities that many take for granted. I want us to build communities where we all have access to this affirmative relationship. One where we are aware of our boundaries and our needs, are intentional in how we front our identities, considerate in how we may be pushing other people's. This might make a world where power is a little bit flatter, but I hope it will make one where we all personally feel more three-dimensional. <laughs>